So back in February of this year, I uploaded a video called Introduction to Commodore 64 Basic Programming. And this is a video inspired by my son uh, asking me uh, if I could teach him how to code. He was um, looking at an app I was working on and he said, oh, that's cool. Can you teach me? So I thought, yeah, great. And you can watch the video for yourself. But we just coded a very simple, um, a very simple, non-optimized, basic maths game. And what it does is it asks you 10 addition questions. So, you know, one plus two, one plus three, you know, using random numbers. Um, and there's two difficulty settings. And that would just determine really how big the integers were, you know. So for easy, you know, you'd get things like one plus eight, you know, nine plus two, that sort of thing. And the harder ones, you just have bigger integers. So it might be 47 plus 50. Well, anyway, in the video, um, or maybe in response to one of the comments that I got, that if you wanted to expand this game, you know, this was an introduction to the Commodore 64 Basic. Um, yeah, a way to expand this would be to include the other um, operators. So not just addition, you could have um, subtraction, division, and multiplication. And slightly more challenging in that, say, uh, subtraction, for instance, you might, you'd have to have a number greater on the left than it is on the right, otherwise you get a negative number. Division, you could end up with a fraction. And um, multiplication is easy enough, um, but certainly subtraction and division, yeah. Well, anyway, um, recently I had a comment from Innerflap, and he's uh, he's done exactly that. He's you know he's risen to the to the challenge and created a version that um, encompasses all four operators for you know the four uh, simple operators, so plus minus. Uh, or addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, uh, so great, well done in a flat. Here it is. So, he's created a version using BBC Basic, uh, supplied with the Acorn Electron and the BBC Model B. So, it's that version of Basic, and um, he's explained the various parts of the of the code and what they do. And it's similar to Commodore sixty four Basic, but there are certain things that I don't think the C sixty four Basic has. Certainly, CLS for clearing the screen <laughs> is a little more difficult on the Commodore sixty four, uh, which is a little more long winded, really. Um, Repeat until I don't believe that exists so um, you know there are there are some differences but anyway downloaded a, a BBC basic emulator here's the code pasted in uh, I really like this um, this IDE because you know, it recognizes where the, the indentation should go so um, all this indented text here is within the repeat until you see so it makes it you know it looks very modern this for loop Again, is uh, you know, indented a bit more, so you can see that the, you know, the loop is separate. I do quite like that. But anyway, without further ado, let's play. You be asked ten sums, one for easy, two for hard. If we put something other than one or two, it handles that by asking again. So we can go for easy. And uh, question one of ten. What is eight plus seven? Fifteen. Let's see if we can do this. Um, two times ten. Twenty. One times four. Two divided by one. Eight minus two. Now divided by three, six minus four, ten plus nine. Oh, ten out of ten. Whew. That's a relief. Then it asks you if you want another go or not. Um, I'm going to do that. Ah, oh, because I didn't do it in capitals. There's a quirk of the BBC, or certainly the simulator. Let's go for hard. Twenty-four divided by twelve. And this is where I'm going to show myself up. Uh, Nineteen times thirty-four. I have got no idea. Seven out of ten. Okay. Do you want another go? No, no this time. Oh, yeah, and you can see there's the code. I've actually ported it to Commodore 64 Basic. I've tried to keep it as as um, close to his one, um, but there are some differences because of the quirks of the Basic. So there's no repeat. You can see it. max equals ten. Yep, yeah, great. I've uh, you know copied that straight over. Can't do the repeat. Um, clear the screen is print character one four seven. Um, assigning a variable with zero, yes, that's the same. And then printing out, you'll be asked. That's all the all the same there. Let's see where the slight differences are. Oh yeah, it's got another repeat here. So what I've had to do is on line 150, it asks, it requests input. You know, the one or two, one or two. So it's asked the question. So if d is less than one or greater than two, so this time we are accounting for it. You know, being outside of what we want. We'll just it will just go to 100. It'll, it'll basically restart the program, and that's so that it doesn't ask line by line. You know, it doesn't ask you again and again and again. So if I type three, it's just going to ask again and again and again. So my version would just reprint the screen. So you know, it looks like it, nothing's happened. I'll show you in in a, in a moment. So I just thought that looked better to do it that way. 
Um, this is exactly the same. This um, D assignment here, depending on you know, it just sets the variable bigger or smaller on the right hand side. Well, on on both sides actually for D, and depending on whether you put one or two. So that's how very similar to mine how it determines the the difficulty just by with bigger integers. Okay, and then we do enter a for loop. Um, so for question one to max, so one to ten. Then we had a random number. Now this is different on the on the on Cobbler 64 basic. See over here on the BBC, it's nice and simple, isn't it? Get a random number. I, I'm guessing between one and four. To do that on Cobbler 64, you do use the R and D um, command. That is still the same, but we have to seed it. You know, what kind of random number do we want? It's a mistake. So we want an integer, so I have to specify that there. Right there we go, folks. So on an integer, we're using one as the seed. All I can remember is that one gives you the most random. Okay, the other two are just are just less. Although between one and four, how random is it going to be anyway? And the way it works on the Commodore 64, the R and D function, it would be zero to four. Okay, not inclusive. So you'd actually get zero to three. So by adding one to this whole thing, it shifts it up by one. So then you get one to four inclusive. Okay, and then we assign um, A and B with different random integers up to whatever the value is in D, okay? And that will be, depending on picked one or two, the size of the integer that it will go up to. And then, we choose, then we're having a look at the, the symbol, okay? Uh, we have to generate a symbol. So if this random number is four, what would be division, okay? So four would be division. So if we've got division, we have to test it. So A divided by B, if that's not equal to an integer, then we just repeat. 190, we load different random numbers into those variables, we test it again until we get one that would be the, the, where the result would be an integer. If it's two, which would be um, subtraction, then we do a test. If a less b is less than zero, then let's just choose some more um, random numbers until we get one where you know a is greater than b, therefore it won't be less than zero. Then we'll ask the question. So first of all, it's saying print, this is question, and then the number of max. So the first time I read it was question one of 10, leave a blank line, and then symbol variable, the sim string variable, is going to have put in it a um, random number between one, well, depending on what the random number is between one to four, it'll pick one of the spaces within this string. So one being plus, two being subtraction, three being multiplication, and four being division. And it says, what is, the first integer, the symbol that's been picked, and then the, the, the second integer. And it asks for the input, then it checks. So if it was a, an addition question, you know, well, if C, the answer is equal to A plus B, then great, we increment the score by one. Um, if subtraction and C is equal to A minus B, increment the score. If it was multiplication and C is equal to A times B, increment the score. If it's division, and you get the idea. If none of them, um, result in true, we're still going to go to the next step of the loop, the next question, but the score won't have been incremented. Okay, at the end we clear the screen and we say you scored, whatever the score is, out of max, out of 10, and obviously we can change max, um, with it being a variable set up here at the start. You scored x of y, would you like another go? And this is where it's slightly different, we can't use the until q is not equal to y. We have to, we don't have to, in, in the previous version, anything other than a y I set it to would um, would end the game, okay? But I want to, you know, tidy that up and it would be, you have to select Y or N or, or press run stop, obviously. Uh, if Y, then go to 100, completely restart the program from the start. Otherwise, if it's N, so if it's N, we go to 380, skips us down here, which is, thanks for playing, and ends the game. If none of these are true, then we hit this go to, which takes us back here, clears the screen and asks again. So similar to up here, we just keep asking, asking again until we get an input that we expect it will do that down here. Anyway, without further ado, so here we have the VICE emulator. And before I run it, actually, let's just see the code. It's already in there. Let's run it. Here we are, 10 sums. One easy or two hard. Let's go for easy. Now, you might notice sometimes there's a delay in the next question being asked. It's the division ones, you see. And that's because... It's quite likely the first time around you'll get a you know a sum that would leave you with a fraction, you know, a floating point number is the answer. It's only on the division ones there. So it just it's not that noticeable most of the time. It was noticeable sometimes, not so much then when I was just playing it through, uh, typically for the video. But yeah, you'll see that 
there could be a bit of a pause sometimes asking a division question. But there you go. Thanks um, very much to Innerflap um, for taking the time to you know, expand on the on the game and make it the full version if you like. Go check it out. The code is in the comment of that old video, and I will put a link to the code for this one uh, in in the description for the Commodore 64 version. Bye for now.